Welcome to episode 8 of Raise the Bar with me, your host, Daryl Barr. In this episode, I'm going to talk about one of the mistakes that I mentioned in the Serum MVP podcast I did of top 10 mistakes Serum developers make. And this mistake I'm seeing, I see all the time, and I hope everyone can see it, learn from it, and don't do it. Okay? So this mistake is just going through and putting variables in your plugin base or your plugin class at the class level. So here I have an example of race condition plugin. And on this, we have a variable in here that's at the class level, okay, an account. Okay. Now the purpose of this plugin, if I go look at what's going on here in the actual execute, the purpose of this plugin is it's trying to go through and it's if the account for this contact is doesn't have a primary account, it's gonna go ahead and set it to the primary account. And then this is supposed to happen on change of the email address. So whenever the email address is changed, if it equals and it returns, if not, it goes through and it processes this, it's going to actually update the account. So if the account, uh, if the contact is for, is on the primary of the account, so here the contact, the primary uh, entity of this, this contact is the primary contact of the account, then uh, actually it's not. If it's not, it's gonna return. If it is, it's gonna continue on. Basically, it's gonna update the account email address based on the primary contact of the account. Okay, that's the whole plugin. But it's written in a manner that is not thread safe. Okay. And I'm going to demonstrate that through a unit test. But first, let's just walk through what happens. This account variable here is going to get set in this initialize account method, which is just going through and doing a query to go and get the actual account based on the account ID. Okay, It's getting the primary contact and the account ID, and that's setting this variable here. Now, this is where we have the race condition that's going to happen, or it's going to be the start of the race condition. Anything after this point, we're going to be potentially in a race condition because this account right here could be set by another thread. Okay, I'll talk about the unit test here. So now the, this is set at the class level. That means it's up here in the class level. It's at the object level of, the, of that uh, of this object. And it's going to go through and, and continue processing. It's going to set the count to the prior, contact to the primary. And again, this method, it's grabbing that variable from the actual class level. What it should be doing is this should be returning the account and the account should be getting passed into this method. And if you do a whole bunch of this all over the time, you may even think about creating a custom plugin context that has this account that you're passing back and forth. But here at this point in time, this could potentially be an issue because the account could have been changed by a new threat. And that may cause an issue, okay? So that's uh, setting the content to primary. Doesn't know to check here. Here we have another race condition. Maybe this could set, maybe it doesn't. And here we've actually had the update email account email here where we do have another race condition here where again, this account ID could have been changed. And so potentially you're updating the wrong account from what you're intending to update. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like in unit test. In this unit test here, um, this is the, the test method call. It creates this little class here, this test method class base, and this actually runs the test. In it, I find a whole bunch of IDs here. So I say I've got 10 accounts and 10 contacts, each of different IDs. And then in my initialize test data method here, I'm gonna go through and I say, hey, go ahead and match this account to this contact. So basically this is gonna set the account ID of the contact to be this. So all these things are, are getting wired up, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, A, B, C, D, E, D, F, G, H, I, J, all 10, 10 to 10, okay, pretty simple there. Now let's go look at the actual test itself. In the test, and this is going to instigate what's going on in the CRM server. The CRM server does not create a new instance of your plugin for every single time the plugin is called. The reason for this is it has to use reflection to go look up to see the correct plugin to call and then to create that plugin. So it doesn't want to do this all the time. The other benefit to this is if you have any information stored in your configuration, in your either unsecure config or secure config on your plugin registration step, that information is going to pass in once to that plugin and then used throughout the lifetime of that plugin. Usually that's an hour from when I've seen that online stuff that usually lasts an hour. And you have a new instance of that plugin in every single server, so be careful of that be careful of that as well. You don't have a single instance. There's one instance per server per plugin step. Or maybe more than one depending on what's going on, but usually it's one. And the, for the most part that's what you can assume and if you live in that model you're not going to have any mistakes. Okay? So here we have the actual plugin that got that gets created. And now we're going to go through and build all this information, which is actually going through and building the context. 
like this get passed in. So each plugin call is going to have a separate context based on what's going on here. So create a builder. Every single one is going to be for this plugin. Every single one is going to be for a contact. And every single one is going to be with the contact with the pre-image is empty. Okay, so that builder goes and does that. But now we loop through every single entity ID, every single contact here, basically. So give me all the contacts that we defined up here in our IDs collection. So give me all these things. It's going to loop through each one of these. And then for each one of these, it's going to go and say, hey, the target should actually be this particular contact with this particular uh, email address. And email address is based on the GUID. It's not a valid email address, but that's fine. We just need to set it to an email address. And again, then the parent customer ID for the contact is set to the account ID. And finally, we go through and we set the ID of the contact for the actual context, the primary entity ID. We build our context, we pass our context into our actual service provider builder, and that provider gets added to this list of providers. And then we go through and we execute the providers. Okay. This execute method accepts either being in parallel or not being in parallel. Right now, in parallel set defaults. And so it's actually go in sequential mode. And in this matter, there is no race condition because everything is one at a time and we don't have nothing to worry about. Or I guess there is still a race condition, it just will never uh, occur because we are forcing it to be single threaded. And the assert here, we're going to go through and get all these accounts from the actual service, so things that actually have been updated in CRM. We're going to go through and we're going to make sure that all the email addresses have been populated and all the primary contact IDs have been populated. So if we look at this race condition plugin, just a reminder, if the account is, I'm sorry, if the primary contact ID is null, it's going to populate it. And then the account email, it's going to populate it as well. So again, we're checking the primary contact is null, we got a problem. Email address is null, we got a problem. Okay. And then finally, we, uh, so we're adding all these issues to this list. We're going to join that list into a single string. And then we're going to make sure that it is null or empty. If it's not, we're going to say, hey, we had a failure. Here are the failures that were found. Okay. So let's take a look at this execute that is parallel or not parallel. Really easy to do this in, C in .NET. You just use the task parallel library, parallel.foreach. And you pass in your actual list of things you want to iterate over in a uh, multi-threaded manner. And then here I say, all right, for each one of these things, go ahead and execute this for that single plugin. Okay, so that single plugin is going through. It's going to get called multiple times. So you're going to have multiple threads executing at the same point in time within the plugin. Okay, so this is in parallel. If it's not in parallel, I just look through each and call each one at a time. So right now, we're set as parallel. Uh, it's not parallel, and parallel is false. If I switch this over to true and save that, I have live debugging going on right now. We'll see this is up. It needs to go check that. It's going to go through and run that in the background. And now it says an error. Actually, I have an error over here as well. We can go through and actually open this up and look at it in the output. We'll see in here that we have our failed message and that we have all of our things that are failed. We can go through and see that not everything failed the same way because we have multi-threading issues. We have one primary contact ID, two, three. Three primary contacts didn't get updated, but a lot more emails didn't get updated. And that's because setting the emails farther down in the plugin until the race condition is more of a chance of actually occurring. So we've had one, this is one entity, two entities, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine out of 10 entities had a problem. Nine out of 10 run throughs had a problem. Sun had everything, nothing happened. So this one and this one, since they're identical, and this one and this one, those had nothing happened for it. They completely lost. It didn't run at all, basically. But it actually ran twice for another one because that threading came into play. Because if we look at actually what happened in here, this initial, we had a thread come through. First thread comes in and sets this, and another thread comes in and it stops on top of it and un overrides it. Because even though we have multiple threads, we only have one instance of this variable. Okay, So don't ever put your variables, don't ever put properties in here that are not based on, this is the one exception that you can do this, that are not based on the things that are passed in, in the actual constructor. Okay. And even if you do that, do make sure that whatever you're putting up there is going to be thread safe in and of itself. Okay. But because this this is actually the constructor is only called once and it has the same set of data. Each time you update it, it's going to create a new instance of the object and, and run that way that you're, you're fine storing. If you want to actually like, if maybe you're deserializing your string in here and you want to actually deserialize it and save it as a variable. So you don't have to go through and do that at, uh, every single time the, the plugin is called fine. As long as that's safe in a multi-thread read only manner, you're okay. But for the most part, never put stuff in here. Never put the I organization service up here. Never put the context up here. Never put the account up here. 
anything that is taken somehow in one way, shape, or form from the context, pre-entity, the target, the service, anything, none of that can go up here because it is no longer thread safe. And you're going to have issues running your plugins and it's going to be very, very difficult to test because in dev it works just fine, but in production under load, you will have problems. So for today, don't do this going forward. Going forward, change it around so you're actually passing back your variables into your actual uh, returning for methods and then passing into other methods. And if you need to, you can even create a custom plugin context that includes additional information. If you are tired of, let's say you've got 15 variables you haven't worked with, you don't want to pass those around. Create another instance, create another object or something to go through and be able to include that data so you don't have to go through and have 15 parameters, 15 parameters to each method. Okay, so those that's the simple, easiest way to get around it. And the simplest way to not run this is just not run into this issue is to never, ever put in stuff at the class level of your plugin. Okay, hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, please let me know. You can reach out to me on Twitter or on LinkedIn. If you do reach out on LinkedIn, please make sure you say where you found me so that way I know what you're coming from. And uh, you can reach me on Twitter at DD Lavar, and on LinkedIn, you can find me at Daryl Lavar.